All right. What's up, Merchant Kings and Jade Empire citizens? This is Stephen, Jake, and Ryan from Phantology with a review of Anthony Ryan's The Wolf's Call. This is the fourth book in the Valen Sorna sequence. I think it's the first book in what is called the Raven's Blade duology, which is actually a probably new word to me going into this series, but it just means when you have two books, a series of two books only. And so it's followed up by the Black Song, which came out in 2019 that uh, we'll get to reviewing eventually, but Jake just finished The Wolf's Call. So Ryan and I are revisiting the book with him. So Jake, you just finished. How was the book for you? Honestly, kind of middle, middle tier for me, probably like a overall, maybe a seven tops out of 10. Mm, okay. And you're jumping the gun a little bit because we are going to do a, a rating. Out yeah. Of I'm 10 just giving a, yeah, when we get so. to the end of this, <laughs> this, this uh, is going to be a brief non-spoiler review. And then immediately yeah. afterwards, we'll be following up with full spoiler thoughts. So this will have spoilers for the first three books of the Raven shadow blood song, tower, Lord, queen of fire, and uh, no spoilers for, for Wolf's Call, no spoilers for Black Song. So this is like going into that duology. I'll say, okay, so what my overall feel of it is being someone who, obviously, I feel like if anyone's read any of the Blood Song books, you love Blood Song. Like that is, in my opinion, by far the best book in, in all of the um, subsequent series that in, involves Valen Alsorna. Yeah, Although, pretty common sentiment. Yeah. So I actually really liked Tower Lord. Um, I don't think, I think that was overly criticized. It's a middle book. And so there's, there's some plot changes and things that need to happen. And like, there's not, it's not as concise. It's more of this like pushing action the whole time. Okay. Queen, Queen of Fire. I do get why there is criticism. I don't think it's as bad as the criticism says. So still, I still think it's like Blood Song, Tower Lord, Queen of Fire. I just don't think the drop off is as steep. So I was excited to start um, another book with Valen Alsorna. And when Queen of Fire and, came out immediately afterwards, after I read it, this is probably four or five years ago. Can't remember exactly. I wrote this scathing review of it on some random review <laughs> blog. So you can still find that out there somewhere. I, I did not like Queen of Fire like at all. Like, See, one I out liked of five it. Stars. I liked it. I was disappointed with some of the some like the way things some things wrapped up. Like I thought something should have been a bigger deal, and other things that were a big deal should have been more minor. But I still liked it, and so I was excited to continue. And I heard really good things about this. And I think it's on this. I think um, the Wolf's Call is on the same level as Queen of Fire. And in my opinion. Whoa. Okay. But, but not my rating of Queen of Fire, your rating. No, of no, no. Of my, my rating of Queen of Fire and, and they're really different. I feel like the weaknesses of Queen of Fire are very different from the weaknesses of Wolf's Call, but on average, they're about the same. Okay. Let's put a pin in that conversation yeah. about the previous books. It is something that people are pretty interested yeah. in. So we do want to talk about it. Yeah. But uh, before we do, Ryan has volunteered to lend his beautiful, beautiful voice uh, to us and read us a review or not a review but read us a synopsis a publisher synopsis of the wolf's call published on goodreads it's, it's a gooder it, it, it's, it's a good one so uh yeah it's a we're, gooder we're, one yeah shut up <laughs> all right yeah let's not hype me up too much before so that people, <laughs> people should have uh not the highest expectations anyways <clears throat> Peace never lasts. Balin Al Sorna is a living legend, his name known across the realm. It was his leadership that overthrew empires, his blade that won hard fought battles, and his sacrifice that defeated an evil more terrifying than anything the world had ever seen. Mm. He cast aside his earned glory for a quiet life in the realm's northern reaches. Now, Whispers have come from across the sea of an army called the Steel Horde, led by a man who believes himself a god. Balin has no wish to fight another war, but when he learns that Sharon, the woman he lost long ago, has Aww. fallen into the Horde's grasp, he resolves to confront this powerful new threat. To this end, Balin travels to the realms of the Merchant Kings, a land ruled by honor and intrigue. 
There, as the drums of war thunder across kingdoms riven by conflict, Valen learns a terrible truth, that there are some battles that even he cannot hope to win. Wow. Do you need uh, some water after that? I was, I, yeah. Ex mm -hmm. Excellent performance. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think you should submit that to, to whoever does the audiobook narrations. Uh-huh. Yeah. That, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Doing a whole audiobook in that yeah. voice would probably, <laughs> You'd probably destroy yeah. my vocal cords. <laughs> yeah. Watch out, Michael Kramer. Ryan's coming for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or if you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nice. Okay. Yeah. And that's a nice little, uh, brief, I guess there's like some spoilers for things that happen, but that, that pretty much like leads into the beginning of the book. So back to our conversation about the other books, what, the, the big question that I see online is, do I need to read the other books? How many of the other books do I need to read in order to go into the wolf's call? And I think this question comes from people that really, really liked blood song. They've heard bad things about the next two. So maybe they read parts of them and gave up or didn't read them at all. And they're like, Oh, this is a new series. I liked Valen. I like blood song. Can I just read this book? Because I, I want to see the story continue. So what do we think about that? Do they need to read books two and three to go into Wolf's call? My opinion is yes. And even if you've already read them, you're going to benefit greatly from doing a quick reread right before. Yeah, I would agree with Jake. I think that it's important to read those books. Just, just if anything, to see the development as an author, I, there's some speculation as to why those books were worse. Maybe like the publisher pushing Anthony Ryan to write mm -hmm. a bit faster than he he's able to, to write at a good quality, level of quality. Um, so I think that it's important to read those also for the story because there's a lot of callbacks to the story that w you wouldn't really understand the inner workings of the kingdom that's happening and and Valen's position in the northern reaches at the beginning of the book right kind of what he's leaving behind what so happened with some of his brothers from blood song some of these yeah. things are, are kind of highlighted at the beginning of the wolf's call but certainly the details and backstory are not necessarily recapped for you. You're expected to know. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I would highly recommend reading them before. And I, I put off reading Queen of Fire for a long time because I, I had read the reviews and I was pretty worried about it. You saw my review, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Steven, Steven, Steven's review put me off of it. Um, but I think it wasn't quite as bad as maybe Steven or other people were saying. I don't think it was quite as good as maybe Jake thought. So I'm maybe in the middle, but I think it's an important book to read for the story of Valen. I'll just say that I own the hardcover of blood song. I own the soft cover of tower Lord and I don't own queen of fire. So <laughs> that's take that for, uh, for what you will, whatever that means. <laughs> I, and it kind of um, going off of what Ryan said, there's just a lot of context you'll not understand if you haven't read the other books, um, especially the way the trilogy wraps up, the first trilogy, the, the end of Queen of Fire. I feel like the consequences of that play well into the plot of um, Wolf's Call. So if you, if you don't really know what happened there or understand it, it could be hard to understand some major plot elements of this one. Yeah, I think you're just not going to like the book as much. If you haven't read two and three, things are not going to be, they're not going to land for you as much. You're going to be like, what's going on here? Why is he doing that? What's this character? Yeah. Uh, you could probably still get through the book and like it okay, but you're not going to appreciate it nearly as much as if you're current with, uh, with the entire series. That being said, most of the characters that are focused on are either new to this book or were in Blood Song. And so, they kind of get the reset button pressed on some of them yeah. too. Yeah. There's definitely like we talked about his brothers of the sixth order. They're at different, completely different places than they were in blood song because there's whole two books that happen and they have their own uh, story arcs. And so you'll be confused like, Oh, how, how did they get to be where they're at now? Mm -hmm. Physically, mentally, like characterization wise and everything. But the main focus is more on characters that, you know, from blood song. Okay, so let's actually maybe talk about this book. Let's talk about The Wolf's Call. So uh, 
Jake, you gave this a seven out of ten. We'll get to we'll get to some ratings towards the end of the non-spoiler review. But what is a series that is similar to this? Like, what's what's another? If like we're gonna recommend this, and someone's like, I like these other series. What series would prompt us to say, hey, you might want to try the Wolf's Collar. You might want to try the Blood Song series in general. Hmm. Blood Song in general, it's a good. It's like a mix of. I don't know. Name it's of a good the wind, coming, maybe. Yeah, na- yeah, Name of the Wind and Game of Thrones, kind of a, a mix uh-huh. of that. Uh-huh. In, in, in a weird way, not in the way, I feel like if you said, oh, it's a mix of Name of the Wind and Game of Thrones, you'd probably think of something different than what Blood Song is. But It's a good coming of age story, which yeah. ties into the Name of the Wind. I mean, that's Blood Song, but as the series yeah. progresses, you kind of get past that. Um, I could see Game of Thrones a little bit just in terms of the the war that's going on and some of the brutality if you've read and i've only read a couple of these books and it was forever ago but the uh, the main antagonist of the blood song trilogy made me think of some of the antagonists from the sword of truth series um kind of that same vibe but it but book like writing and plot wise it's not similar Mm. at all okay okay but it's kind of its own thing. I don't know. I don't really know what to compare it to. Yeah. Okay. So kind of rolling off these ideas, what are, what's a reason why you should read this book? If you're going to recommend this to someone, what's the pitch? What, what's the best thing about it? Uh, Wolf's Call, I would say, if you love Valen Alsorna and you want to see what, what happens, that is probably your number one like yeah. reasoning for it. Number two would be if you were like, are there spoilers for the first trilogy or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, if you're like, where did Sharon go after book one? Oh yeah, that, that's probably a. If you already like Valen, you already know you're gonna want that, but you're still not sure. Do it for Sharon at least to figure out what's happening with Sharon. That should be your number one. Did it seem like parts of this book were created because Anthony Ryan spent a lot of time on Reddit or something and just heard what people, what fans were saying? It's like okay. <laughs> They love Sharon. I got to get Sharon back. I'm going to write this book with Sharon. I, I don't know. Cause at, at, I, I think the way that Sharon was written out of the series, it left it open to something that he was going to return to. And I remember reading Queen of Fire or hearing about Queen of Fire and learning that Sharon wasn't in it. She didn't return in it. And I was very disappointed. And I think that yeah. was probably one of the reasons why I put off reading it for so long was because I wanted to, I wanted Sharon to come back into the story. Mm-hmm. And when she didn't, I, I was disappointed. I put it off. And so that's something that brought me back into this when, when Stephen, you were reading it and you mentioned that Sharon was in it. Um, that was something that, uh, in addition to wanting to learn more about Valen and his story, I, I also wanted to learn about what had happened to Sharon since she left. Phantology loves the sappy fantasy romances. <laughs> if there is such a plot element in your book and you're, yeah. let, let us know, we will read it. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd say like there is this, I don't know, like this, at the same time, read this book because Sharon's in it to find out. But I think this book kind of makes the whole Sharon thing, it kind of makes it even more confusing because in Blood Song, you're like, Good. oh, he's he's making like you can tell there's this implied promise Sharon's coming back. But then you get to Queen of Fire and Sharon doesn't come back. So you're like, oh, maybe this is one of those stories where, you know, like more like Game of Thrones, where ha- things don't always have happy endings. Sometimes uh-huh, things just uh-huh. drop and like that's the end of it. But then this book is like, oh, but here comes Sharon again. So it's like, okay, which one is it? Am I should I be expecting it? I don't know. That was kind of that's fair. It's kind of up and down. I would say another reason to read this is if you like kind of overpowered, almost. uh, I don't think I don't know if Valen is necessarily like a Mary Sue character, but if you like characters like Quoth, for example, from Name of the Wind, who are just super capable and really cool and totally BA type characters, I, that's Van All Sorna for you. So yeah. if you like that, then this series is appealing. Steven, you know, that that comment made me make the connection that it, it's similar in in that aspect, especially to, it's very similar to uh, this books, The Rage of Dragons and mm-hmm, Fires mm-hmm. of Vengeance. Tao is a similar character to Valen in some ways. And I can see that, yeah. And, and 
just a very capable protagonist, almost almost unrealistically capable. And plug for our Fires of Vengeance review, which is coming up soon, as soon as Josh finishes the book, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so I, what's I, a reason why you shouldn't read it? Like, is uh, Jake, you gave it a 7 out of 10. What were some of the weaknesses? Um, well, this is kind of like something I was excited to read about it and then disappointed. I, I really liked the antagonist of the first series and the, like, the blurb that... Um, Ryan wrote like there's a hint that that's coming back like the the same kind of thing as the mm -hmm. ally the one who waits but I felt like this book overall just kind of felt meandering and not really okay. exciting the beginning was exciting it was had a good hook of okay this is what we're doing this is why there's some like tension here mm -hmm. but then throughout their other 80 percent of the book it was like okay like can't we just get to where we need to be for the action to start instead of like, I appreciated the exploration of the new culture. Although at times I felt like it was a little bit, I don't know, just like copy pasted. Sure. And, and then at the end, there's like a lot more excitement and like cool stuff that happens again. But so for me, it was just kind of meandering throughout the middle. And if you want Jake to fill in those vague holes, listen yeah. to our next episode, which, which we'll talk about these uh, actual plot elements. And I uh, just another thing that I would add to that, it, if you want more of Valen within his current kingdom, the kind of the a continuation of the story with Queen Lerna and any disputes going on and uh, Riva, if, uh -huh. if, the, if that's yeah. what draws you into the story, those people don't play a large role whatsoever in this it's a new book. setting, new setting. So, and, and yes, yeah, some of the side characters are pretty new. So, yeah. And I, I agree with Jake that the quality isn't quite up to blood song levels as well. So if that is what you're expecting and that is what you want and you're not willing to settle for maybe a little bit less, still good, but a little bit less, quality in this book then i wouldn't read it okay so we are going to do a brief content warning for the book converting this book over to mpa movie ratings what do we give the wolf's call i give 13. it yeah i'd give it a pg-13 for yeah. language and violence nothing yeah, yeah and I, probably I, I, language first then violence it's a solid pg-13 yeah yeah. Although okay. I think if you translate directly, there's what PG-13 allows for one F word per per whatever. so many hours, but then so the hours, books yeah. are much longer. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. T tough to tough to make that uh, transition yeah. 100%. And I mean, if all the violence, which was described in the book was shown on screen, it would probably be rated R as well. If it was if it was shown as it was described, you know, it wasn't super graphic. That's kind of, yeah. That, that's kind of tricky, right? Because if all the violence that was shown in Brandon Sanderson's books was shown on screen, it would also be rated R, but he doesn't really focus on it. So the movie should kind of cut away in yeah. the same way, I yeah. would assume. Or like Lord of the Rings. Like they, sh they have a lot of violence, but there's not like blood everywhere. Right, so. right. Okay, so let's end with our rating for the book out of 10. Jake, uh, you've already kind of broken down your seven out of 10. Ryan, what do you give this book? I would probably give it a eight out of 10, similar Ooh. quality to Tower Lord. Okay. It's, so these ratings are a little tough because we all kind of have different scales, right? <laughs> yeah. Some of us are a little tougher. Some of us are a little more lenient. I'm going to go ahead and give this book a 7.5 out of 10. I'm trying to remember my other ratings and I do remember I gave Rhythm of War a nine out of 10 and I gave The Dragon Republic by RF Kuang an eight out of 10, so 7.5 is, is a little bit on the lower side for me, but uh, still a solid book, and I would say the best book since Blood Song. I guess Jake disagrees, but uh, that, yeah, that's me. I do disagree with that. I think Tower Lord is better. Um, also, just pointing out, if you look on the Goodreads review of The Wolf's Call, you can also find another review of Stevens, and I think you gave it a five, four or five stars. 
Oh, did I? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't, you can't put much <laughs> stock in the way that I do, do stars on Goodreads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah, I think, think we all about know Goodreads that isn't super reliable. Yeah. I don't think about a, those He gave it a four. He gave it a four out of five stars, four which five. I mean, okay. if, if you 7.5 yeah. divided by yeah. two, what is that? 3.75? Yeah. That's Rounded pretty close out. to four stars. Yeah. Okay. So, that's some good math in your head uh, on the fly, Ryan. Sometimes you're, it can be tough nice. to do math on the recording. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So thanks for listening to our non-spoiler review. I, we are will, going to, yeah, Jake. I, I will say, although my, my score is the lowest, um, I will say that the ending makes me excited to read the next book. It definitely doesn't end in a way where I'm not excited to continue the series. Nice. So on average, 7.5 out of 10. And if you want to hear our full spoiler thoughts, you can do that coming up next. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Phantology. If you'd like to let us know your opinions on all things sci-fi and fantasy, join our Discord. Invites are in the episode descriptions below. If you'd like to support the show, like these fine folks here, you can do that at patreon.com slash phantology underscore books. Patrons get early access to new episodes, exclusive postings, and exclusive Discord benefits. But of course, just listening and watching and sharing with your friends and family is support enough. Journey before destination all. 